This is a basic video for those of you who have not used the App Exchange and want to deal with the security tokens and the uh, API keys. So let's get started. So if you have not gone into the X-Force before, you will need to go there and click here, agree to create uh, to the terms of service and create an IBM ID. Uh, and it's a simple process. You put your information, uh, your email, and then you're going to be on the next step, you're going to be generating your password. Make sure you keep that password in a secure place. And once you do that, you can actually log in into the App Exchange. Once you've done that, you can actually go into this hamburger and go into the App Exchange and download the app of your choice. It's good to know that the UBA guys, <laughs> they put a new version. They're very busy. I need to see that later. But uh, Another thing that you should do while you are here, you can do it right now or keep this in mind for future uh, times, is click here on this uh, person icon and go into settings. And this is the information that you want from the App Exchange, what you want to subscribe. It's a lot of goodies in here, if you give that. But that's, that's not the, th the themes of this video. And you need to generate some keys. I'm going to pause the video before I click here. And here is a good idea to generate API keys. What are these API keys for? These are for apps that you have in Curator that needs to talk to the App Exchange. For example, the Assistant app. In order to see what new apps are there, it needs to talk securely to it and it will use those keys. Go ahead and generate those keys and make sure you keep them in a file, in a secure file. If you lose them, you will have to regenerate them again and put them into those apps because those apps will stop working. You can only have one key uh, that is valid at a time. So keep that in mind. Now that you have generated your key and you have it in a secure place, you are ready to install your app. And if you've never done it before, what you do is you click here on extension management, you click here on add, point to wherever you put that zip file that you downloaded from the app of your choice, click add, click install, and you're done. Now, most of the apps, the first time that it that you log in, it says, hey, give me your security token. What is that token? That token is the mechanism for that app to securely talk to Curator itself. So it needs to have a security token. It doesn't use user ID and password. And uh, you will either be prompted for it the first time that you click on the app. When you, when you have installed an app and you click here on whatever app you added, typically you're going to be welcome. Oh, give me give me that security token. Uh, some apps also have the option like, uh, for example, uh, this one, the use case manager. When you click here, configuration, you will be as you have a place here for to put that security token. Okay. Now, where do you generate those tokens? You click in this icon, authorize services. Okay. I'm gonna pause the video before I click because I don't want to show my authorized keys, even though it's a demo system. So, first of all, you sh in the same way that you don't, sh you should not share password you should not share security token. You should have one security token for every app. It's a good hygiene, it's a good security practice. And, you know, let's say that if you share, if you only use one security token, and let's say that you have it uh, to expire, it's gonna break, you know, more than one app. And uh, again, good security practice is one security token per app. Now I'm gonna click here on add authorized service because I wanna talk about a few other things. Say I'm adding a new app. I'm going to call it test. Now, make sure that you, you know that in Curator, there's a role-based system that allows you to see what are the things that you can do. And the security profile would basically allows what are the things that you have access to see or not. Flows, logs from this network, from that network, etc. And what are the apps that I can use and what are the things I can do? These are in the, you go into these uh, respective icons in here on user role and security profile. And you will see that. Let me actually go there. So here are the user roles. 
and you specify what are the things that I can do. You know, I have multiple users that have different levels of access, and you should as well. And in here, on security profile, you can specify the visibility of the things, you know, what networks can I, I can see or not, you know, etc. right? So that is that corresponds to that uh, screen. Let me actually get back to it that you see here, right? Now, this is a demo system, so I've been sloppy and I put my tokens to never expire. You should not do that because it's not a good security practice. But make sure that you have a good methodology for, you know, when this is before these uh, keys expire, these tokens actually expire, to make sure you generate, you add a new one, and then you put it into the configuration of the right app. Otherwise, the application will no longer work. Now, once you do here create service, you will need to deploy changes. You will get this yellow banner in there that says uh, you need for that token to be valid, you need to deploy the changes. Once you have deployed the changes and this banner has disappeared, you can actually grab the token. And that's the only difficult part of all this process. I'm going to actually click here to show you that. And you need to actually right click on the, on the browser and highlight only this section in here. Like I'm doing right now. And I, you know, make sure that you don't get the colon and, you know, get over this. So. Once you have that, put it in the clipboard and you are ready to insert it into the configuration of any app. Now, as I said before, applications like the Assistant app, use them both. You need the token to talk to QReader, and it's here. And you need an authentic an API key to talk to the App Exchange to see what app are new and all this stuff. So you put those in here. Make sure, I mean, the API keys, uh, to my knowledge, they do not expire, but the security token do expire. So make sure that when you do this, you, you take into consideration share accounts with different users. And and if an app, app, app stops working, you may know what the problem is. You may need to generate a new token if the previous token expire. Do it before the app, app the, the, the token expires to avoid, to avoid any disruption on the app usage. And you can put it back into the actual 